Hello, welcome to Jesus for All Two. God's Word, Your Daily Bread, for February 4th, 2022. Here, according to Luke 11, 22, you will hear. But he said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the Word of God and keep it. And Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And so today you shall hear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 1 through 2, reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And verse 12, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. And verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. For First Peter 2.24 says, He who himself who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. And Luke ten nineteen says, And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And John fourteen six, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And John fourteen seven, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And John fifteen seven, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. And John fifteen twenty six. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And when he has come, according to John sixteen eight through 11, he will convict the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin, because they do not believe in me, and the me is Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Word. Verse 10, of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you will see me no more. That righteousness, because Jesus Christ came, died on the tree for us, suffering as we should have suffered for, being sinful, and being killed, maimed. He died for our sins that death would have no victory over us, that we should live in the light. And he was resurrected by the Father, and now left the earth to sit on the right hand of God. So he is no longer here. And then verse 11 of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. So once Jesus Christ died, returned to life, was resurrected, and returned to heaven, judgment was imparted on this world in the name of Jesus Christ. But those of us who believe in him are in the light. Our sins are forgiven. Forgiven death and darkness have no victory over us any longer. We are children of light, children of God the Father and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit because we believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest Thank you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, for the victory. Today we shall hear, February 4th, 2022, Psalm 18, verse 16 through 30, Proverb 4, because it is the fourth day of the month, and there are 31 Proverbs, one seemingly for each day of the month. The Proverbs are God's wisdom. From the Song of Solomon, or the Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 1 through 16, from the Old Testament reading will be from the book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 25, and the New Testament reading will be from the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 1 through 27. 
All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. And now Psalm 18, beginning at verse 16, and it reads, He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands. He has recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not done wickedly and have not wickedly departed from my God, pardon me. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Verse 24, Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful you will show yourself merciful, with a blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Amen, 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 in Jesus' name. And this word, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, is already blessed. And now, Proverbs. Proverb 4. And we do understand that the Proverbs are... God's wisdom. It's God's entailed instructions to his people to deal successfully with the practical affairs of everyday life. How to relate to God, parents, children, neighbors, and government. Amen and hallelujah and glory to God. Psalm 4. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it, and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines even brighter into the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings and do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and help to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead, and your eyelids look right before you. 
Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Verse 27 and last. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Amen, amen, and amen. And this word, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, is already blessed, and I pray in Jesus' name, as is every hearer. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest. And now the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, and it reads, reads, and by way of reminder, this song is an allegory pertaining to Israel as God's betrothed bride and the church as the bride of Jesus Christ. So the bride is the church, and in this song of Solomon, that she that is the Shunammite. The beloved is the king, and that is Jesus Christ. It also is Solomon. So it's an allegory. Amen. And also there are the chorus are the daughters of Jerusalem. And so, Song of Solomon chapter 5, and it begins with the beloved. I have come to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. To his friends, eat, O friends, drink. Yes, drink deeply, O beloved ones, the Shulamite. I sleep, but my heart is awake. It is the voice of my beloved. He knocks, saying, Open for me, my sister, my love. Open for me, my sister, my love. My dove, my perfect one. For my head is covered with dew, my locks with the drops of the, of the night. I have taken off my robe. How can I put it on again? I have washed my feet. How can I defile them? My beloved put his hand by the latch of the door, and my heart yearned for him. I arose to open for my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh on the handles of the lock. Verse 6, I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and was gone. My heart leaped up when he spoke. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. Verse 7, the watchmen who went about the city found me. They struck me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls took my veil away from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him I am lovesick. The daughters of Jerusalem, verse 9. What is your beloved more than another beloved? O fairest among women, among women, what is your beloved more than another beloved that you so charge us? The Shulamite, verse 10. My beloved is white and ruddy, chief among 10,000. His head is like the finest gold. His locks are wavy and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves by the rivers of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are like a bed of spices, banks of scented herbs. His lips are lilies, dripping liquid myrrh. His hands are rods of gold, set with burl. His body is carved ivory, inlaid with sapphires. His legs are pillars of marble, set on bases of fine gold. His countenance is like Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Amen, amen, amen. And this word, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, is already blessed, as is every hearer, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now the Old Testament reading from the book of Exodus which we are beginning today. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest. And by way of introduction, the book of Exodus. Exodus is the record of Israel's birth as a nation. Within the protective womb of Egypt, the Israelite family of 70 rapidly multiplies. At the right time, accomplish accompanied with severe birth pains an infant nation numbering between two and three million people is brought into the world where it is divinely protected fed and nurtured 
Amen. Amen. And now, the book of Exodus, chapter 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel who came to Egypt. Each man with his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Issachar, Zub Zubulin, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. All these were descendants of Jacob. All who were descendants of Jacob were 70 persons, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brothers, and all that generation. But the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, multiplied, and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Verse 8. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply, and it happen in the event of war, that they also join our enemies and fight against us, and so go up out of the land. Verse 11, Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh support supply cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar, in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service in which they made them serve was with rigor. Verse 15. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of, the, of one was Shipra, and the other was Pua. And, and he said, When you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew women, and see them on the birth stools, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God, and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the male children alive. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives, and said to them, Why have you done this thing, and saved the male children alive? And the midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are lively, and give birth before the midwives come to them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very mighty. And, it, and so it was, because the midwives feared God, that he provided households for them. So Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Chapter 2 And a man of the house of Levi went and took as a wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was be a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to see, to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Verse 9, Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, Because I drew him out of the water. Now it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out to his brethren and looked at their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew one of his brethren. So he took his, he, so he looked this way and that way. And when he saw no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two Hebrew men were fighting. 
And he said to the one who did the wrong, Why are you striking your companion? Then he said, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? So Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of this matter, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he, and he, Midian, and he sat down by a well. Verse 16. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water, and they filled the troughs to water their flock, their father's flock. Then the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them, and watered their flock. When they came to Revel, their father, he said, How is it that you have come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us from the hand of the shepherds, and he also drew enough water for us and watered the flock. So he said to his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. Verse 21. Then Moses was content to live with the man, and he gave Zephora, his daughter, to Moses. And she bore him a son. He called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a foreign land. Verse 23. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out, and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. So God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Verse 25 and last. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God acknowledged them. Amen. Amen and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. And I pray the word has also blessed every hearer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name. And now the New Testament reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 17. And it reads, Now after six days Jesus took Peter, James, and John his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still talking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and do not be afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Now as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then do the, the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Jesus answered and said to them, Indeed, Elijah is coming first, and will restore all things. Verse 12, But I say to you that Elijah has come already, and they did not know him, but did to him whatever they wished. Likewise, the Son of Man is also about to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the Baptist. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? 
Verse 20, So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Verse 21, However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Now, while they were staying in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and the third day he will be raised up. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. Verse 24. When they had come to Capernaum, those who received <clears throat> pardon me, the temple tax came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, yes. And when he had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him, saying, What do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes? From their sons or from strangers? Peter said to him, From strangers. Jesus said to him, Then the sons are free. Verse 27 and last. Nevertheless, Least we offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money there. Take that and give it to them for me and you. Amen, amen, and amen. And this word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ is already blessed. Hallelujah and glory to God. And it is my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that as it is written in Psalm 107, 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. That because we have heard in the name of Jesus Christ, this, the word of God, God himself, Jesus Christ himself, that he has healed us, each hearer, and delivered us from every destruction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We believe and we receive the healing. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name.